The fight to save Tasmania's Lake Pedder with its distinctive pink quartzite beach was one of the nation's defining environmental campaigns. Outraged by the Tasmanian government's plans to flood the lake for hydroelectricity, environmentalists Save took to the Pedder. streets. Save Lake Pedder! Save Lake Pedder! Lake Pedder was just the jewel of the southwest. We just can't let it go. It was just most unusual to have a beach that's you know vastly, vastly bigger than Bondi Beach in the middle of a, a of a wilderness in the mountains, in effect and a unique ecosystem. And it gave birth to the Green political movement. Despite the protests, by late 1971, nearby Serpentine Dam was closed off and the reservoir began to fill. The scheme is going to be completed and uh, I don't intend uh, to ask the Hydroelectric Commission to make any alterations to it. Nor do I think the great majority of the Tasmanian people would desire that I should make such a move. As the waters rose, a group of activists gathered on Lake Pedder's beach in a final stand. Society matron and prominent arts patron Brenda Heen was one of them. People are becoming interested overseas, UNESCO, and the people who um, value um, the, the uh, natural phenomena mm. that is Pedder mm. are becoming very interested in um, trying to save it as well. After weeks of protest, the beach vigil had to be abandoned in the face of rising waters. Brenda Heen decided to take a radical step. She would fly to Canberra with experienced pilot Max Price to skywrite Save Lake Pedder over Parliament House in his vintage Tiger Moth biplane. In 1960, I bought it and completely rebuilt it. So you're quite happy about its capabilities? Oh yes, there's not a nut or bolt in it that I haven't seen. I feel Max and Brenda, they were both passionate about what they were doing. So it was fairly much a, what more can we do to save this iconic place? Brenda's niece Celia Watchhorn clearly recalls seeing them take off from Hobart. It was September the 8th, 1972. There was a small group of us, just to farewell this little biplane off on its journey. There was no hurrah or anything more than that really, and the little tiger moth just flew off. So yeah, that was quite a, a moment. But within hours, Brenda's family received troubling news. We had a phone call in the afternoon to say that there'd been uh, no further sighting or no radio control, no radio contact from St Helens. A 10-day sea and air search found no sign of the plane. A disbelief, shock, and what could we do, basically? Yeah, time went on. Absolutely no trace. Other mysteries soon emerged. There was evidence the hangar had been broken into and their emergency locator beacon left behind, leading to rumours of foul play. Brenda had received threats um, over the phone, like, would you like to go for a swim? And, and questions of whether it was sabotaged or not. But, you know, without a, out finding a wreckage, you, you can't really prove anything. Five decades on, the disappearance remains unsolved and Lake Pedder is now 20 metres underwater. But the push to restore Lake Pedder to its former glory remains alive. To mark the 50th anniversary, both old and new generations of Lake Pedder activists are commemorating the mystery of the ill-fated flight by retracing the original route in another tiger moth. Brenda Heen's great-great-niece is a co-pilot on the journey, taking the Restore Lake Pedder campaign to Canberra. I want to spread the message about my great-great-aunt and what she tried to do and finish off what she did. I think I'm just doing it to honour my family and for her, really. Even though I didn't get to meet her, I just want to do what I can. We're going to have sky riding. Rather than save Lake Pedder, this time it will be restore Pedder over the Parliament House to complete the task that 
was uh, embarked upon 50 years earlier. It's not the first push to drain the massive reservoir and restore the original lake, something Tasmanian governments have rejected. I believe it's an absurd suggestion that we turn the clock back and drain that lake. That would be an economic and environmental vandalism uh, to even consider uh, that effort. Those who remember Brenda Heen and Max Price are undeterred. They both went, hopefully quickly, with their flags flying and you can't wish for any more than that really. And the message, it's the strength of the message that has continued on from their sacrifice is quite extraordinary. It's not going to go away in a hurry at all.